core one, practice paper one, question number five. And here we have question number five. Just have a quick check to see if it's exactly the same as appears on this exam paper. Yes, everything that we have there is on the page, so that's good. A sequence denoted as A1, A2, A3 and so on is defined by the first term A1 is a 4 and this works out all subsequent numbers in the sequence. We've got n there and we've got n plus 1. This means to say if you take a term, any term you like, double it, subtract 3, you get the next term. So if that's the nth term, n plus 1 is the following term. So if we take any term you like, double it, and subtract 3, you'll get the next term. As long as n is 1 or greater than 1, which is in a way obvious I suppose. Find the values of A2 and A3. In other words, find the second term. So let's write down the first term. That's the first term. The next term, which is going to be the second term, is worked out by doubling the first term, which will give you 8 and subtract 3. Appreciate this you could do in your head without writing down, but I really am going to try and push the point of showing working out. It's worthwhile. The third term, to find the next term, you double the previous term and subtract 3. So if I double the previous term, 2 times 5, and subtract 3, I get 2 fives, 10, subtract 3, that's 7. So that's understanding the terminology or the notation of the question. So that's all that's about is really is testing. Do you understand what this statement is saying? Now this is another bit of terminology. Do you know that this is a sigma sign and sigma means add up? So this is looking at the sequence A1, A2, A3, A4 and it's saying take it from the R as 1, so in other words from the first term to R is 5. It's actually saying work out the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term, and then add them all together. Sum the first five terms. So that's notation that if you understand then it's a very easy question. If you don't understand that notation, well you're completely stumped. What have we got? We've got the first term, the second term, the third term, so we'd better work out the fourth term and the fifth term before we go any further. So, we need double the previous term and subtract 3. Double the previous term and subtract 3. 14 take away 3 is 11. Fifth term, double the previous term previous term was at 11, and subtract 3. So that's 22, take away 3, that's 19. So this is saying, add up the first, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth terms. Non-calculated paper, but I think we could add those up show you're working out because if you go wrong or make a silly mistake here and you haven't shown this working out you'll get a big fat naught there whereas if you show you're working out and get that bit wrong just at the end you'll get all the marks over here let's have a look see what the marks are shall we so we've got one mark for working out the second term one mark for working out the third term a mark for working out the fourth term, a mark for working out the fifth term, a mark for appreciating you add them all up, and a mark for adding up correctly. Now, I'll be honest with you, if you just wrote down 46, you would get these three marks as well, because you can't get 46 unless you do work out that term, and you do work out that term, and you do add them up. So you've got to get all four marks for that 46. My point being, if you make a silly arithmetic error, which in the exam is highly likely for some of us, 
you'll get naught if that's all you write down. Whereas if you write down the other working out, you get somewhere between one and three marks. Show you working out. Very important. So that was question five from this first paper on core one. If you want to see all of the exam questions and all of the solutions, you'll need the video, the DVD, that you can get from visiting www.mathtutor.biz. I hope to hear from you.